In today's video I'm going to show you how you can draw a trend line in MQL5 for your expert advisors or custom indicators. So as you can see on the screen there's an example of a trend line on a currently running expert advisor and I'm going to show you how you can draw a line like that. So first off we have to think about what we normally need for a trend line. So whenever we draw a trend line on a two-dimensional chart, we need two coordinates and both of them are made up of two data points. First off, we always need the date, which we can see down here, and we need the price. So for each coordinate, we need a date time variable in MQL5 and a double that holds the price. So let's start right there. So I have just created a brand new expert advisor and inside the ONTIC function I am going to create a date time variable. Let's just call it time1. This will hold the time of our first coordinate. And we also need a second one for our second coordinate. Then of course, as I've mentioned before, we need a price variable for the first and for the second coordinate. So in this example, I'm just going to fill them manually. So I'm just going to say the first one stores the date of 2023. January the 3rd. Of course in your expert advisor or custom indicator you need a different way to store the date time in the variable. So for example you could access previous bar data and say uh, my time 1 variable will hold the opening time of the lowest bar in the previous 30 bars for example. So this of course depends on your strategy but in this example I'm just going to show you how to do it manually and then you can change it up for your specific type of expert advisor or custom indicator. So let's add the second date 10 50 and also add the seconds at the end. Okay, and so the price data for the coordinates for the first one in my example is 0.62644 and 0.62763. Again, you can fill these variables for example with the opening or closing price of a candle. If you want to learn how to get information about previous bars, I've made a video about that. So uh, you can check out the video description I've linked to the video. Okay, so next we can actually create our trend line. To, those, to do so, we need the object create function. First off, the chart ID is usually zero. And then we need to give our trend line or whatever object it is, we create a unique name and identifier as a string. So let's just call it trend line. Then we can choose the type of object we want to create. We want to create a trend line which is called object underscore trend. Then sub window. For a trend line, you usually don't use a sub window. So you say zero. And now I have to pass the daytime variable time one, time one, twice one, and time two and price 2. We can compile it 
and it works. So as of right now, this expert advisor will create the trend line. However, we are going to do a few modi modifications. So first off, let's use the object set integer function. Again, let's say chart ID zero. Now we need to pass the same name again. I call it a trend line. And now you can see there are different object properties. So let's start off with object property color, which simply changes the color of our trend line. And let's say color antique white. And let's do the same again. Object set integer, zero, trend line. And now let's change object property ray right. Oh, ray right. This simply means that the trend line won't end at the second coordinate, but simply goes on forever or until you delete the object which is usually what we want to have. And we need to pass the value to. There are some other functions to modify your objects. For example, you could use the object set double function. You can use it to set properties such as the deviation for the standard deviation channel, or you could use the object set string function to, to change such things as the font or the description of the object. Okay, so obviously when you create an expert advisor, you don't just want to draw a trend line, but you also want to use the trend line in order to generate trade signals, for example. So it's very important to access the current value of the trend line in order to check if the market price has cross the trend line, for example. So we can create a double and let's just call it current trend line price. And now we can say object get value by time. Chart ID again, zero. Trend line, which is the unique identifier of our trend line. And now we have to pass a daytime variable we want to get the value for the current time. So we say time current. And line ID zero. Now I'm just going to use the normalized double function in order to round the value we got. So that's an optional step, so you don't have to do that, but uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to get the current, the digit value for the current symbol. And then I'm going to set the, the value of the current trend line price variable to normalize double. And as an integer digits. So this will basically just round our value, so it's not necessary. And let's, let's just print the current trend line price to the screen. Let's compile it again and let's check it out. Okay. So I've just started the expert advisor. And as you can see, there's already the line showing up. So it worked well, we can go to the journal. And as you can see, I'm just going to pause the expert advisor. And here you can see the current price of the trend line. So we can use this price for, for the generation of trade signals. And we can go back to our program code. And inside the on the init function, we can say, objects delete all for the current chart and this basically means that once the expert advisor stops running all the drawn objects get deleted
Okay, so that's it. I hope you've learned something new. If you did, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to learn how to create and optimize your own trading robots, make sure to subscribe and see you in the next video. Bye.